It's a big day in the Bronco Sport. As we're reviewing this vehicle, we're taking our four-year-old to her very first day of school. Let's go. We just popped the hood, let's check it out. So the Bronco Sport, <laughs> every time you shut the door, if the engine's on, it's gonna beep at you. The Bronco Sport comes with two powertrains. This being the more upscale of the Heritage models has the two liter turbo, 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque. I'm sitting around 21, 22 miles per gallon, but it can get better than that. I've been sitting in car line a lot this week, picking up the kids, dropping the kids off from school. So it should be able to get about 25 miles per gallon. There's a smaller engine as well, a one and a half liter turbo, which we'll talk about later at the end with a buying guide. But for such a small vehicle, it does have a ton of power. This hood is very lightweight as well. The Heritage model is a showstopper. I've been getting more attention in this vehicle than any other car I've had in recent memory, even maybe more than like the Nissan Z. The main part is because of this robin's egg blue. People just, especially ladies, Cassie behind the camera, what do you think about the color? Love it. You gotta have it. So good. It's gorgeous. And it just looks so classic with the white grill and the red lettering. And I like the Bronco Sport not being shy of its off-roading capabilities, having a couple tow hooks uh, up here up front as well. A couple fog lights on the edge. As we come to the side, that nostalgia creeps in even more to accent the grill, the paint. We have these gorgeous white wheels. They look so classic, pulled straight from the 60s or 70s. We also have this iconic Bronco Sport Italic at the same time. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Now, like the white wheels, like the white grill, we have a white roof as well, which accents everything else in the vehicle. We have these glossy window surrounds, black, uh, on the A-pillar as well to give you kind of that floating roof line effect as well. So we come around to the back of this cute, boxy little off-roader, which I haven't taken off-road once, which it can do, but you know, I see these things mainly as mall crawlers or as like- Beach parkers. <laughs> beach parkers, beach vehicles. This is a beautiful beach vehicle. Again, the white lettering on the back with the Bronco Sport, we have a full-size uh, hitch here. We have parking sensors on the back as well. Check out, there's a couple cool features here. I can pop the glass if I want and I can also open the door. This is not an automated door. The thing I like about it is very lightweight and you have a handle on each side so no matter what side you're on it's easy to pull down. Also Cass come under here real quick. There's the swivel light so if you're doing a little tailgating there's a little button right in here. Boom. And then we have these swivel lights on each end of the tailgate. Just so cool. I don't think I've seen any other manufacturer do that before. It'd be a f this vehicle just always wants me to, to spend more time with it because it's so versatile. We also have this table and it is magnetized. So it sticks in place with these magnets on each end and it also sticks in place with the magnets when you fold it up, even with the, car, the kids' uh, car straps kind of in the way. I wanna show you this real quick as well. We have a ruler back here, maybe if you're going fishing so you can <laughs> measure your fish or something. We also have these pop out legs right there that you can use to prop this guy up. I'm not quite sure how you would use that, but it's super versatile. Of course you can take this out, but if you're doing uh, groceries or something, you can have this double system, double tray to take the, or get the most out of this setup. There's also a spare tire under here as well. We have a full household plug in here, 110 volt, 400 watt max. So you could plug in your coffee maker if you're at the campsite, use your imagination there. You also have a 12 volt in the back and this has a rubber mat on the back of these seats, so when you fold them flat, it's super versatile and easy to use. So let's go ahead and get in the back seat real quick. Now, these doors look pretty basic, and it is hard touch here at the top, but we have a nice soft touch piece here where your elbow is going to rest with the red stitching. We have the most crazy back to these seats. Super soft, very high quality. We have the zipper pouch that you can hide stuff in, and we even have a little design in there as well. So the thought even into the back seats, and no, you don't have a lot of leg room back here, but your knees are gonna be pushing into this soft material. And these are little straps to keep maybe a tire pressure gauge or a pocket knife or something like that in there as well. But you have these side sleeves as well. They aren't the, the deepest side sleeves, but you can maybe put like a can of soda in there or something or an energy drink. Here's your rear vents, USB-C's down here, and also an additional household plug for 400 watts of power. 
tons of headroom back here. It's very boxy. We also have a very nice large sunroof on this model. Fold the armrest down and we have a couple cup holders to keep the kids hydrated. All right, on the inside of the Bronco, I mentioned the door material is being a little bit harder in the back, but it is a soft touch at the top of here, even though it looks identical. And it has this kind of fabric touch. Cass, I don't know if you can zoom in here. This is a soft touch dash. It has a fabric material here uh, that looks like cloth, but it's actually kind of like a soft molded plastic, which is pretty cool. Now, I like this little white accent that goes around the center instrument panel here, I guess you could say. However, since it is white, I always have this white line on the windshield. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but it's always there, uh, at least in the daytime when the sun is allowed to reflect a little bit off this white strip. All right, the screen is really small. However, it gives me Android Auto. It is not wireless that I'm aware of. I have to plug my phone in for it. Now, this screen, even though it's small, is very easy to get to everything on the screen. It's not so wide that I have to move my arm around. I can literally just rest my hand at the bottom, like this little shelf here, or at the top to, to interact with it. And there's hardly any reflections and, or fingerprints when this screen is on. We also have a wireless charger down here. Uh, speaking of phones and interaction, there it goes, it starts charging, it lets us know up here on the screen. So anyways, let's move down from the screen. I love the volume and the tuning knob. One thing about this car, I haven't found a way to turn the radio off every time you turn on the car. So it starts the radio at a low volume um, and I'm not sure how to start the vehicle without the radio coming on. So it's kind of annoying in that regard, but there's probably a, a way around, it's probably user error. The B&O sound system, this cute little tweeter up here, so stands for Bang & Olufsen. It's kind of their lower tier system, but it has a really good 360 effect. When I'm sitting in here, I thought there was speakers in the headrest or in the chair, but it was actually the speakers coming from the back door that gives me a great uh, surround sound sort of feel in here. So I really enjoyed that. Now, as we come around to the steering wheel, gotta love the Bronco logo. The rest of it, you know, this is kind of average quality here. It's not the most comfy feeling or the softest, most premium leather here on the steering wheel, but the stitching is quite good. The world's smallest paddle shifter is here to road through the eight speed auto. I haven't used them once. The eight speed auto in here is pretty good as we'll find out. We do have radar cruise control as well as lane keep assist in here. And we have this smaller seven inch, I would say MID here to give me the information I need while I'm driving. I also have memory seats on this side as well. We have a little shelf here if you want to keep your phone up there, which I think is more convenient than keeping it down here. Uh, but down here we have a USB-C and a USB-A as well as a 12 volt adapter. Now the climate control is really simple, easy to use. I love the direct fan control. And notice how my elbow is resting right on this soft material. It's just easy to get to everything without having to move my arm a whole lot. Yeah, I kind of have to lift up to get to the volume knob though. So not, not perfect, but I'd give it a solid B. Love to have the rotary dials here. No, I don't have a screen to tell me the climate control, but it is quick. It's not laggy to pop up on the top screen. I do have a heated steering wheel in here as well as heated seats. No ventilated seats on this model, which is gonna come around $45,000 or so, but wait to my buying guide where I think you can get a better deal. You have the rotary knob here for drive select. I guess simple, easy to learn. Reminds me a little bit of the, the rotary phones when we were growing up, rotary dial phones. Is, am, I, am I stating my age at this point? Moving down here, we have the auto brake hold, which luckily remembers you uh, and your setting every time you start the car up. So most manufacturers, this doesn't have a memory setting, but it does here on the Ford Bronco Sport. Now we also have the GOAT mode. So when I twist that knob, we have a bunch of different modes here, seven in total. Now I've really only used the normal mode. I'm not doing anything crazy on-road or off-road, but this has more GOAT modes than the standard models that I'm aware of. Also, we have a center locking diff here or forcing it into all wheel drive. That's my understanding of it. And then there's also a rear locking diff here, which I can't think of any other vehicle in this car's class that has a rear locking diff. We also have downhill ascent control. Now, I love the heritage established in 1990 or 1966, this little plaque here at the bottom. And you have the, the little screws here as the headlights and then the Ford grill in the middle and the logo. It just looks really classic. Lifting this up, we have two more USB-Cs. So the amount of plug uh, plug-ins in here, I think there's six USBs in here. 
two, two 12 volts and two 110 volts. So this thing is going to be an awesome topper upper of your batteries or runner of your accessories. But I think I've covered just about everything in here. So let's go ahead and buckle up and get on the road. So I got this button here. We have a front cam, well, as well as the backup cam, but the front cam is a nice feature when you're pulling into your parking spot. Gigi just said her mermaid fell down and that's one of the benefits of having a small vehicle is that you can easily reach into the, the back row without having to turn your head or, you know, pull, pull a shoulder or something like that. Now, getting onto the gas here, this thing has more power and torque than you would ever think in this small vehicle. If you try to get on the gas early as you're leaving a turn, the power is mainly sent to the front wheels, it feels like, and you're spinning your outside attire. I'm not gonna do that with the family in here, but it is definitely front wheel drive bias in this vehicle. And that's why I think not getting the two liter is the way to go. You're gonna save a ton of money and you're still gonna have great power and torque, really as much as like a Honda CRV, which is a bigger class vehicle uh, with the one and a half liter, but you have a better transmission uh, with a true eight speed auto compared to let's say a Honda CRV or HRV, which has a CVT transmission. So just pedal down here a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't sound that incredible. Ford's done a good job really removing uh, the engine noise from uh, really disrupting the passengers and the ride quality in here is really really good uh, it reminds me a little bit of subarus that's the closest vehicle uh, feel i can equate this to the vehicle feels very wide very planted it soaks up all the imperfections in the road very well um, it's pretty darn quiet i didn't hear that vehicle go by what about that jay no no it's not like it's just like pin drop quiet in here i do get a lot of white noise but i'm not hearing any road noise really i'm not hearing wind buffeting i'm not hearing the cars go by so this little thing is almost luxury quality when it comes to ride uh ride feel and ride quality as well as noise isolation okay so i'm 5'2 and i'm maybe short but it feels good i like how tall i am you set up but high i like sitting up high in cars yeah. well in fact you had to lower the seat when you got I in here, did. right? When I first got in, I was a little too high. I was like taller than Kirk, and which yeah. doesn't feel good. But <laughs> <laughs> but appropriate height, it feels good to be nice and tall. I don't like to be short on the road. I like to be able to see the road ahead of me as opposed to just see the the top of the, what's it called? The, the hood. The hood. Yeah. Yeah. Which, speaking of the hood, you definitely notice it in here. Ford has really designed this hood to be macho in a small yes. package. Mm -hmm. And it makes the vehicle feel bigger than what it is right. when you see how macho this hood is. It's like, oh crap, I'm kind of in a big vehicle. And then you get out or you see it from the side and it's like, this thing's tiny. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. Like a statement car. It's a statement car. And you know, the like I said, seeing it from the side, it kind of has that like kind of that old school body on frame off-roading feel to it right. but then when you get to live with it for a few days you realize just how small it is like getting the kids in and out of that back seat with backpacks taking them to it's school it's not the easiest oh my gosh it is very difficult there's hardly any room for the kids to get in and out of that back seat right. especially if they're carrying things so yeah. i wouldn't say it's the best vehicle for families no, but if you had one or two kiddos and you could, you could make those modifications, it. yeah, you can live with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, we lived with a uh, like a Toyota Matrix. Matrix with three kids. With three kids. This, yes, this has uh, a little bit more cargo space maybe than the Matrix. So it is yeah. doable. You're, it's just that there are other options out there that are going to be better suited little, for families yeah. for the same price point. It'll be easier. <laughs> yeah, but none of them look as cool as this none Bronco them, Sport. No, they not, don't. Yes. Yeah, they won't get you the attention. Yeah, what did, what did you say when it first pulled up to the house? Um, that it looked like a Barbie car. It looked like a Barbie car. It's beautiful. It's cute, beautiful. It's so cute. There are very few vehicles, I'd say, in this class that really stand out with design. Right. The Ford has nailed it with this Bronco Sport, with the powertrains, the affordability, but most of all, the looks. Right. It looks so cool. And it's a vehicle that like I could easily see our family having. I wish though, you know, mm -hmm. Cassie and I are both 
both like hybrid people. Right. Ford has good hybrids and they didn't equip this with a hybrid powertrain like uh, it's stable made the little Ford Maverick pickup truck and I think that would have done well here it, it, but maybe they didn't do it because they don't have an all-wheel drive powertrain for that uh, hybrid okay but they're Ford they could absolutely engineer it if they <laughs> wanted to so uh, anyways if they had a hybrid uh, variant of this, I would say the vehicle is nearly perfect for what it is. But mm -hmm. Now, before we get into building the 2024 model, I reviewed the 2023 model in today's video. And the Heritage Limited sits at the very top. That's the one I reviewed. I absolutely adored it. However, they have this lower Heritage model. That's the way I would be going. You get all the looks. Not quite as many features, but man, is it 10, 11 grand less expensive. And it's still going to have plenty of power, like I mentioned. So what we're going to do is go ahead and build on the Bronco Sport Heritage, the entry level, not the limited model, comes in around 30 some thousand dollars. Now, of course, there are other trim levels, which it just depends on your cup of tea, but I think the wheels and just the overall aesthetics of the Heritage is by far the best. The Heritage Limited at this point in time, when I'm filming it mid 20 or summer of 2023, Heritage Limited is not available to build, which is perfectly fine because it is not that good of a deal. So I'm gonna build off the Heritage here. And this is the only way you can get your hands on this Robin's Egg Blue. However, for 2024, I don't see that beautiful light pastel yellow as an option here. That's gonna be tough for me because I really like the yellow as well. Now we don't get that chocolate interior, but I actually like this kind of plaid-like interior that we have on the cloth end. Now let's make this bigger so you get a better idea of the interior you're getting. I think it's better in my opinion. I don't want that hot leather in, here in South Florida. And I like the blue accents that we have on the dash with the vents on the door as well. I, I'm just not a big fan of brown. I'll see you guys down below what you think of brown on the inside. But I think this cloth interior is just more pleasing to the eye uh, and it's going to be more comfortable in the hot sun. Now, this one and a half liter EcoBoost is going to be a beast. It's got like 180, 190 horsepower somewhere in there. And like I mentioned, that's the sort of power you see on vehicles that are on a scale larger than this. Four by four is standard, which is awesome. Eight speed auto. We have the tow package on this as well. Now you can get Copilot 360. What does that give us? Well, it gives us adaptive cruise control, which I think is going to be quite helpful. So let's go ahead and add that. And man, this looks good as well, having uh, the steering wheel that's premium wrapped as well. So let's go and add that as well. Don't think it's completely necessary. I definitely don't need heated seats uh, down here, but parking sensors are nice as well. We got the Oxford white painted wheels, the 17s that were on the, the, the $10,000 more expensive model. And there's a ton of exterior options you can get on this. You could get the power moonroof. I'm going to go without it because it's just going to make the cabin that much hotter here in South Florida. I like the cargo mat. Let's add that. You can actually get an interior bike rack. That is pretty incredible. Won't be doing that though. And let's go ahead and get the floor liners as well. Now, something I didn't mention is that underneath the mats, the floor of the Bronco Sport is like rubber. It reminds me of like the old Honda Element. So you could probably, I wouldn't want to put a hose in it uh, for obvious reasons, but you could might be able to do that since the whole vehicle on the bottom, the the center, center portion here, at least on my limited trim, was covered in a rubber liner. Bronco Heritage Sport, with all the options that I got on it, I optioned a 39K which I don't need all the options. Really, the looks of this vehicle is the most important thing for me. Let's see what's out there in my local area. So what I have clicked, I have the yellow and I have the blue and I have the Heritage uh, and Heritage Limited models clicked. You can get into some Heritage Sports out there for as little as $31,000. No, it's not the beautiful Robin's Egg Blue that I have. What's Okay, so here's the Robin's Egg Blue, which I absolutely think it's totally worth the, the upcharge, and I would be getting this model right here. Flying through the pictures, it looks identical to the model that I have in the driveway, but I have the more desirable, in my opinion, plaid seats. And the steering wheel, I don't think, you know, it actually looks the same. Oh, the screen in between the gauges is more basic. That doesn't bother me. This still gives me the information that I need. And these dials on the side are about the same. So that doesn't bother me, even though it's more basic. The screen in the middle is exactly the same. I don't have the front camera on this, which is completely unnecessary in my opinion. 
I'm not going to have all the goat modes, but the rest of the vehicle, I mean, looks, I know I don't have the sunroof, which I don't need. I have the hitch. So I think for 33 K and you get the one and a half liter turbo, I think this is, and it still has heated seats on this. That's pretty nice. So this is a great deal in my local area. Let me know which type of Bronco you'd be getting. The, the Heritage is just so cute and the color combinations are, are rock solid, but we're gonna head back into the car and wrap up this review. All right, I think we're gonna end it there. We've really enjoyed, I mean, we're gonna be sad to see this yeah, Bronco Sport it's leave. it's such a cute car. It's so cute. I love being seen in it. I love looking at it. I love parking it right in front of our windows at our house oh, so we can just look out. Beauty. There are very few vehicles that it just makes me happy when I look at it. Like the Miata right. is one of them. Right, right, right. And this Bronco Sport makes that list as well. I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys. If you enjoyed the review of the Bronco Sport as much as we have, yeah. <laughs> hit the like button. We appreciate that. Make sure to subscribe. I'd love to get the full size Bronco here on the channel as well. And this road is terrible and it's actually quite comfortable here it's a little noisy but it's noisy uneven luxury cars and the bronco sport just handling it no problem yeah. smoothing everything out but anyways i got in there thank you for presenting it to us yes. and can't wait to see you guys in the next one peace